Um, I've been looking at a couple different brew methods and there's a couple other guys that are doing a variety of brew methods. But this one in particular really comes with an amazing story. It's, it's a traditional type V cone brewer, but it's imported from Japan. It is a Yasakiyo wooden dripper. It's a Japanese made wooden dripper. It comes with a 400 year old tradition of lacquered vessels. So some of your traditional Japanese teacups um, are made of this. It's a special type of wood cutting technique called the tatigaduri and it's the way they shape and cut the wood against the grain that reinforces and makes this um, vessel incredibly strong and durable. The incredible thing about it is, I'll show you, give you an example, it's a very small vessel and it's the size of, a, of basically a one to two cup. But if you look at this, the thing only weighs 83 grams. It's very, very light. But the processing is is absolutely amazing. The way they intricately cut this, um, the latitudinal ribs specifically helps for the water flow. The one thing I noticed with this wooden dripper compared to your other shaped cone drippers is that you end up with an extraction of about 20 to 30 seconds longer. So it definitely slows it down, you get a lot better extraction. So you know, this, this dripper is pretty amazing. It's very, very straightforward in terms of brewing technique, etc, etc. When it comes to grind size, I'm using my loom grinder today. But when it comes to grind size, just for, um, for general purposes, you would grind it on probably an 8 on a standard EK. And that really is roughly the grind size. So something, something along the lines of a, of a plunger. Um, the one thing I want to say is once this is cut out, the process of this being made, it's handmade, they made one at a time. It's turned out, it then gets a layer of the lacquer, and then over a one month period, they brush it with a mixture of lacquer, polishing powders, and dear to Maccus earth. They mix that together and they polish it and polish it and polish it. Sometime, sometimes up to 20 times before they get this result. The one thing I can say that I've looked online with um, is if anybody has an issue with the quality and if it in any way taints um, the coffee, the guys are so serious and so passionate about this that you can imagine as a 400 year old tradition that this wood is actually made from. So, the company that does this is Caruso Kayoto in Japan, and this was an amazing gift sent to me by Perfect Daily Grind from uh, Henry Wilson. And yeah, it's, it really is something special if you look at it, the, the craftsmanship. You can see, unfortunately, it's well used, it's, it's a bit scuffed, um, and as <laughs> I just couldn't get my hand on any uh, Diatomachus earth to, to re-polish <laughs> this, so um, it's very well used, and I've, I've brewed with this alongside with a lot of other drippers, and Zane, you know what dripper beat this in a taste test. Um, uh, we won't say and maybe you need to do that dripper but um, you know the one thing is is that alongside most flat bottom drippers um, it really really gives a phenomenal phenomenal result so today and um, according to the recipe with this what I did is a bit of research it's like pretty much like a standard V shape uh, one to two cup you can use anything around 15 grams and with a 14 to 15 gram uh, amount of coffee, you would use approximately 200 grams of water. So you come in at a 1 to 16, 1 to 17 brew ratio, just like the rest of the brew methods. Okay, so my kettle um, is, is at the right temperature. All I'm going to do so long, like with any of your, your standard brew methods, I use an um, unbleached uh, paper. I'll pop that in there. I do my temperature of my water at around about 92 degrees. Okay. 
doing a bit of research on this particular dripper, it follows very similar protocol to your standard um, V60, but they recommend you just do the bloom plus two pours. So you would do your, your, your bloom of one, one to two, uh, sorry, two to three parts of, of water to gramage, and then um, a pour up to about 100 grams, and then your final pour. And your pour, basically in a circular motion, inside to outside, outside to inside, and then once again. So I've just warmed up, make sure I've got it nice and warm. I've got this here, let me just pour this through. My vessel's nice and warm. Okay. Now, I'm going to pop that on, I'm going to tear it, like I say, I've pre-done my, my grinds. Massive thank you to Bloemfontein Coffee Roasters, to Adrian, for this amazing um, Rwanda Bajo community lot, specialty coffee, it's very, very, very nice. So I'm looking at about, like I said, about 15 grams, and then I'll do about, just about 225, 220, 225 grams of water. Okay, so that's it. Just level that off. Okay, I'm going to just take out. Okay. And then I'm going to tear my scale again, and I'm going to start with my initial bloom. So like I said, we've got 15 grams. I'm looking at anything between 30 and 45 grams. And I want to just ensure that I really wet the surface of the coffee properly. There we go. Just over 40 grams. Come a bit closer. You can see beautiful bloom. The coffee is really just past its, its date. You know, it's probably sitting on about day 14. So um, I'm not getting obviously the bloom that I want in terms of the freshness of the coffee, but it really um, is still a beautiful coffee. Beautiful aroma coming off this coffee of, of stone fruit and it's absolutely delicious. Okay, so um, I'm going to start with my first pour, inside to outside, very very slowly, like I said, and I'm going to stop at about 100 grams. There we go. All right, you can see it coming through. If you look at that beautiful coloring, let me just move the kettle out the way a little bit. Beautiful coloring on that coffee. And when it gets to about halfway, I'll carry, I'll carry on with that. So the recommendation from them is exactly this. Inside to outside, and then I'm gonna do my full amount now of 225 grams. Okay. That's it. Pouring through lovely. We'll have a closer look at the coffee now now when I pour it out. Let me just warm up my cup. You'll notice I've got a little bit of a setup here. I've got some cupping spoons and stuff. Actually, straight after this, I'm going to be doing a small little cupping session with uh, two other coffees I've got here. And I just thought I would do this at the same time. Okay, so your overall extraction time on, on this uh, brew would be anything between probably uh, 2 to 2 minutes 20. Um, uh, I want to get a good a good extraction. Um, I want a, a good yield on on the coffee, as well as try obviously get as much flavour as possible out of it. If I notice it's slowing down quite a bit, um, I just give it a little bit of a swirl, and then I'm basically going to just pop it over. I don't want to exceed my extraction uh, time too much. Okay, I'm going to pop that over to the air. And there we go. Look at that beautiful coloration on that. Lovely aroma. 
beautiful color on this coffee. Um, I, I had some of this coffee yesterday through my Clever Dripper. It was absolutely delicious as well. Oh, so fruity, absolutely beautiful, incredibly clean, lots of body, lots of flavor. So thank you for joining me and allowing me to introduce you to this beautiful um, Yamanaka Shiki uh, wooden dripper from Japan and um, like I said it comes with amazing heritage, an amazing story and I have a lot of respect for this brew method and it might be small and not weigh much but um, it's <laughs> it gives a beautiful coffee. So thank you, cheers.